Welcome, and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you, because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on ovarian cancer. And I am delighted to present Christine Greer and Amanda Winters from Charlene's Light, located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome, Christine. Thank you very much for having us. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And Amanda? Thank you so much. Oh, I am so delighted that you could come on Knowledge for Wellness. But my viewers have not seen you before. So I'd really like for you to share a little bit of a personal story of why you decided to open up this great awareness on Charlene's Light. So Christine, could we have you go first? Sure. Um, well, I am an ovarian cancer survivor and I'm very proud of that. Yes. I'm a 10 year survivor of a late stage, so I'm very, very happy to be here. Yes. And I started Charlene's Light, a foundation for ovarian cancer, about three and a half years ago in honor and memory of a dear friend who died of it. Oh, I'm sorry. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's my passion. Yes. Great. And then, of course, Amanda, now there's a little bit of a personal story with you as well, if you wouldn't mind sharing that with my viewers. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I lost my mother to her battle with ovarian cancer oh, sorry, a little yes. over two years ago. Mm. Uh, so it's a, a foundation that's very near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. uh, to want to give back and to want to raise awareness as well. Yes. And awareness is the biggest key right now. And a lot of people know a lot about breast cancer, but a lot of people aren't even familiar that ovarian cancer actually is very deadly. Right, yeah. exactly. So I think we'll back up and you mm -hmm. know start to explain to my viewers exactly what ovarian cancer is. So Christine, if you wouldn't mind. Sure, ovarian yeah. cancer is a disease mm -hmm. in which malignant cells or cancerous cells are found in the ovary. Mm -hmm. And an ovary is one of two small almond-shaped um, organs on each side of the uterus. Mm -hmm. yes. So that, that's basically what it is. Okay, so actually it has um, attached itself to? Right, to the uh -huh. ovary, and it's, it's a very deadly form of a gynecologic cancer. Sure, mm -hmm. yes. And so we want to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, maybe making awareness of the symptoms, Exactly. Too, because it, it hits hard and it's mm -hmm. deadly. And are there any signs or symptoms that we can look for as females? Absolutely. Um, however, the signs are very vague. The mm. symptoms are vague. Okay. They kind of whisper to the body. Mm. So a woman really needs to listen carefully to her body. Yes. They can include um, abdominal pain, uh, bloating, back pain, frequency of urination, mm -hmm. um, a feeling of full, being full quickly, or a loss of appetite. Mm. Um, Indigestion, um, let's see, unexplained weight loss or weight gain, okay. or ongoing fatigue, mm -hmm. or any menstrual irregularities. And now a woman often has these symptoms, so they're so common mm -hmm. that they're easy to dismiss. Yes. But if a woman has any of these symptoms for, um, you know, more than two weeks, and that's that's the key. If it's ongoing, if it's persistent for more than two weeks, she needs to go to her doctor yeah. and she needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. I believe if it whispers to our body, it might whisper to the doctors too. It's, okay. it's, it just doesn't jump out at them. And like I said, those, those are very common symptoms. Who doesn't have a backache? Um, a little indigestion now and then. Yeah. But persistence is the key. Yeah. And awareness to right. be prevalent to that as well. Exactly. Yes. And you know at Charlene's Light we encourage uh, women to listen to their bodies mm -hmm. and, and go to the doctor and get those opinions as well. Sure. Well those are some of the symptoms that a woman can experience. Uh, my mother had a different example where she had some abnormalities where it mm -hmm. wasn't normal for her to experience queer in her hands and oh. in her legs okay. and for her she had a very rare form where um, they found out when she ended up going to Mayo Clinic um, that she had a palmar fasciitis in okay. conjunction with ovarian cancer which basically means your limbs and hands start crippling. So mm -hmm. again, just being aware of the different signs that you do see in your body as well because mm -hmm. they might be irregular but, mm -hmm. but listen to them. Yeah. And so now my thoughts go to, you know, being preventative. And is there anything maybe that we can do to prevent ovarian cancer? 
Well, no, it cannot mm -hmm. be prevented, but it appears as though there are some things that might reduce the risk for okay. a woman. Well, there, let's take that. Yes, yeah. such as oral contraception has been proven to help reduce a risk. Okay. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, pregnancies mm -hmm. will reduce the risk. Breastfeeding can reduce the risk. Okay. And, of course, a hysterectomy in, in a real serious case. Mm -hmm. But, again, if a woman has any of those types of things, you know, concerns, she should talk to her doctor. Oh, definitely, yes. We mm -hmm. talk a lot uh, at Charlene's Light, too, about going green for wellness. Oh, okay. Uh, taking the more natural route mm -hmm. with a lot of things, and that might be, what are the cleaners or the things mm -hmm. that you're using around your home? What are the natural uh, right. things that you're eating and, and ingesting, too? Just being more mindful of getting those toxic chemicals sure. out of your home, uh, because a lot of those have been, now studies are reporting, have been causing more and more cancers. So mm -hmm. um, we speak a lot about just being more aware of going green for wellness. Sure. And also my thoughts go to, you know, better eating habits, walking mm -hmm. every day, you know, trying to back up and take a little bit of time for yourself as well. Absolutely. And, that, and the fruits and vegetables. And people need to realize that probably 90% of what we eat is that goes into our body will help run the body better as well. Yes. And now, is there any uh, early detection, a blood test? I know that we're supposed to go in as females, you know, every year, and we all try to take good care of ourselves, but that doesn't always work out. So are there any thoughts on that? There is no early detection test for ovarian cancer, and that is, I find that very, very disturbing. In this day and age, Exactly, definitely. with yes. such a deadly cancer. Mm -hmm. um, breast cancer, thankfully, has the mammogram. Mm -hmm. Colon cancer has a colonoscopy. You know, the P, uh, prostate has the PSA. With ovarian cancer, we need an early detection test. Sure. Um, majority of the time, it's found in a late stage because of that, and mm -hmm. because those symptoms whisper. So at Charlene's Light, we're just very, very diligent about, we're gonna raise money for an early detection test. Yes. Um, but if a woman does have symptoms, she should go to her doctor and she should ask for these three things. She should ask for a pelvic exam, okay. um, a transvaginal ultrasound, and a CA-125 blood test. Okay. Uh, now the blood test is not an early detection test, but it's a tumor marker test a blood test, and it will, in a conjunction with the other two things, it will help a doctor determine, do we need to look any further? Yes. So that's all we have right now, and that's, it's very concerning. Mm -hmm. And we as individuals have the right to ask our doctor for that. Yes. Because if we have a hint of it, and this is such a deadly disease, even though they may say it might not be covered by insurance, then again, you know, how do you put a price on your health? Right. Exactly. I have a friend who gives herself a birthday gift every year and gets a CA-125 blood test. Oh, okay. Again, it's not an early detection test, but she wanted um, the first one as a, you know, just as a baseline. Sure. And mm -hmm. to make sure. Also, it can give false positives. If a woman has um, endometriosis or perhaps a cyst, it can be elevated and maybe cause worry for mm -hmm. no reason. Oh. However, you know, it is all we have right now. So. Mm -hmm. And it can be a great birthday gift as well. Yes, I, yeah, absolutely. I do one every year, having the history with my mother. Mm -hmm. right. um, and, and just to kind of point out, too, with a CA-125 test, a normal test should run anywhere between 1 and 30 on a scale. Okay. If it's above that, again, you can have the false positive, but it, it's good to be mindful of where does that lie on you, too. Right. Mm -hmm. um, anything above that might be some cause to um, look at a second opinion or, or mm -hmm. look further into things. Sure. And now that test that you're talking about that you wanted to either talk to your doctor and or your OBGYN, depending upon your level of comfort, what would that entail for someone that would go through that test? Anything specific on that? Just, um, you know, just a, your typical pelvic exam mm -hmm. and a transvaginal ultrasound, which just takes a few minutes, but it will give them a very close look at your ovaries. Sure. And and then again, just a simple blood test. Okay. So the three, the three in combination mm -hmm. is, is important to do. Right. And is this actually your mother, you're saying, um, had this, so you're very mindful of it for yourself. And then Christine, did this 
just come on as a surprise to you, or did you have any family history? No family history. Okay, so no um, awareness. No yeah. awareness. I only knew of Gilda Radner. Oh. That's the only ovarian cancer um, woman that I had ever known of. Mm -hmm. I had no symptoms. Um, I was one of those women who went in every year to the gynecologist for my exam sure. and never had a problem. But the summer of 2001, 10 years ago, my doctor said upon exam, I cannot find your right ovary. I think we need to do an ultrasound. And I thought, well, okay, I really wasn't worried. And mm -hmm. she's, she called the next day and said, it's just a benign um, grapefruit-sized fluid-filled cyst. Don't worry. Oh, okay. So I didn't, mm -hmm. and she said, but just to be sure, let's um, examine you next month. We'll give it 30 days, we'll do another ultrasound, because sometimes these just go away on their own. So I really didn't worry, but I knew that there was something in my body that didn't belong there. Okay. And I could feel that it was growing. It was actually starting to bulge out of my right side. Oh. So I went back oh. to the doctor a month later, mm -hmm. had another ultrasound, and the following day, I had a very concerning message on my machine. She said, um, this is your doctor, please you know, uh, call me right away. Sure. I called her and she said, I really need you to come to my office right now. Well, my heart just about stopped. Oh, sure. And she told me that um, the outside cell structure had changed and it was looking malignant. And this tumor uh, uh, cyst had grown to almost the size of a football. Oh, wow. And to be at that stage and to not have symptoms is very concerning. Mm -hmm. A few days later, I had a complete hysterectomy and what they call debulking, which is removing everything and as much cancer as they can get. Sure. And I was staged at stage three and given very poor odds of survival mm -hmm. and then sent down to Mayo Clinic and was treated by a brilliant, caring oncolog GYN oncologist. And okay. I'd like to add that if a woman is diagnosed with any type of a gynecologic cancer, mm -hmm. it's very important to see a GYN oncologist. They specialize in that type of cancer. Sure. So wow. after that, I, I really did a lot of reflecting mm -hmm. and thought, okay, this greatest teacher of my life has entered my life, mm -hmm. cancer. What, yes. what can I learn and what can I do to stay alive? So I literally made a list of, of things that I needed to do in order to stay well. Mm -hmm. um, it started with being positive. Oh, yes. Um, eating organic. Mm -hmm. I decided to give up meat. I never really liked it anyway. Okay. Um, I cut down on some of my sugar, but couldn't give up the chocolate. <laughs> um, I, I stopped watching the news mm -hmm. <laughs> because I didn't want anything negative mm -hmm. around me. Yeah. I surrounded myself with everyone who was supportive and knew I would make it. Mm -hmm. I'd only watch funny movies. Okay. And every morning to this day, I look in the mirror and say, you are healthy and you are cancer free. Yes. Wow. So I'm grateful for every day. Mm -hmm. And I can see why with the success story that you have, and I'm grateful that you're oh, here too as well to bring you. awareness of ovarian cancer to others. Now, I'm not sure a lot of my viewers even know, you know, the different stages and you mm -hmm. had mentioned stage three. Mm -hmm. So if you could elaborate a little bit on stage mm -hmm. one, two, three, and four. Well, stage one, it's contained mm -hmm. in the ovary. And if it's found at stage one, your odds of survival are 90%, I believe. Sure. Sure. Um, and two is it's, it's expanded a little bit beyond the ovary. Mm -hmm. And three, it's in your abdomen. Mm -hmm. And four, it's in other areas of your body. Sure. And so with each stage, of course, your odds of survival um, go down. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, those symptoms are so subtle and so quiet mm -hmm. that, you know, I didn't even know anything was growing in my body. Yeah, that is just amazing. And so it brings me back to risk factors that mm -hmm. are linked to ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell my viewers a little bit on that, the risk factors? Well, some people have a genetic predisposition. Okay. Um, perhaps um, a mother or a sister mm -hmm. has tested positive for it's called the BRCA1 and 2. It's a gene test that will tell them if, if you know, you're positive and mm -hmm. if you're likely to uh, come down with ovarian cancer. Sure. Also, if you have a family history of breast cancer or even colon cancer, you're mm -hmm. at higher risk, as well as um, if you have Ashkenazi Jewish background, uh, that group of people has a higher oh. risk of ovarian cancer. Okay. And then again, um, aging. Mm -hmm. um, women who are menopausal or postmenopausal have a higher risk. But I'd like to say that I've met women as young as 17. Oh my. So it's not just mm -hmm. um, an older woman's uh, disease. I've met many women in their 20s, 
30s. I was only 41. Oh, wow, well, when that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of this, you actually established Charlene's Light, and you could tell my viewers about how that came about. Mm -hmm. That would be really great. Sure. Mm -hmm. I had a dear friend named Charlene Postigo, okay. and she was diagnosed with stage 3 mm -hmm. ovarian cancer as well. Okay. And we were each other's cancer buddies. Well, she was diagnosed about four and a half, five years ago, mm -hmm. and her type of ovarian cancer was a very aggressive. There are different types, and okay. hers was very aggressive, and it was aggressive from the get-go. After about a year, she recurred, mm -hmm. and it came back with a vengeance. Oh. And she did the chemo again. She went to different medical facilities. She really was going to fight this tooth mm -hmm. and nail. Um, after a while, she realized that it just wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. um, the cancer was taking her life. So she chose to end the last six weeks of her life at home, mm -hmm. surrounded by her family and her friends. and. I was so fortunate and privileged to be able to go and visit her most mornings. Mm -hmm. uh, one morning as I was going to her house, I thought, there has got to be something else I can do for my friend. I was stage three and here my path is going this way and she's, mm -hmm. pa you know, she's, she's passing away. What can I do about this? Too many women are dying. Mm -hmm. So I decided I could start a foundation. Yes. And so I went to her house mm -hmm. and I said, hey Charlene, I've got this great idea. I would love to start an ovarian cancer foundation in your honor. Mm -hmm. She was tickled. She yeah. was very happy and I said, hang on for a while please. Help me plan the foundation. Share your dreams and wishes with me. I want this to be about you. Yeah. We named, named it Charlene's Light because she was a very radiant woman mm -hmm. and um, I wanted that word in there, something about her radiance and her smile. And so we call it Charlene's Light, yes. a foundation for ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. We had it up and running by the time of her funeral so we could share this news with everyone oh, there. Wow, what and, a wonderful um, contribution to her. Well, yeah. thank you. And we are just passionate about trying to make a difference. I will, I will carry the torch for her. Yes, well, and you also have some other people other than Amanda that are backing you as well. Absolutely. Her husband. Yes, yes. Um, her husband is on the board, Felipe Postigo. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful caring board, Amanda mm -hmm. is on the board. Okay. Judy Lautenschlager is our treasurer and she has a personal connection as well. Her sister-in-law died last year mm. of ovarian cancer. It seems to be more and more prevalent, oh, doesn't it? It is. Yeah. And then our last board member is Dr. Carlos Grados, who is an OBGYN doctor and gives us his medical expertise. Okay. Good, mm -hmm. yes. And then, so Amanda, you um, also are connected to Charlene's Light. And how is it that you got connected other than your mother? Well, my mother was diagnosed back in 2006. Okay. And in 2009, uh, as we were gearing up for our own wedding, um, my <laughs> mom actually passed four weeks uh, before our wedding date. Oh, I'm sorry. And I really had in my heart a passion for wanting to do something about it. Mm -hmm. We had no idea uh, about the signs, the symptoms, anything associated. Uh, when she was first diagnosed. So it was really on my heart to want to do something to uh, be a part of a foundation, but not one that was so massive that I couldn't make a personal contribution. Mm -hmm. And um, having been introduced to Chris, I just, uh, we've been so fortunate to be able to partner together and share that passion for um, just wanting to enhance people's lives and raise awareness mm -hmm. about the education. And um, I feel very fortunate to be able to do that. Yes, wow. And just the more and more that we reach out to, to make the awareness, then hopefully they can connect with you. And the, you have the foundation, you have a mission and a focus. And I love mm -hmm. that, but I already know what it is because I've mm -hmm. been fortunate enough to meet with you before. And if you'd share that with my viewers too. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, this mission was written by Charlene. Mm -hmm. She said the most important thing to her was to educate the public and the community about ovarian cancer and its symptoms. So um, I get out there and I speak as often as I can to different groups sure. and share, um, you know, share the information and share hope and share, hey, this whispers to a woman's body. Please listen mm -hmm. and be an advocate for your own health. Mm -hmm. um, our second point is to support patients and families going through this because it's very difficult. It's, it's so frightening to hear those words, you have cancer. It mm. really takes your breath away and it's not just for the patient but the whole family is affected. Yes. So we support 
families in whatever way we can. Mm -hmm. And the third mission is to raise, raise money for research. Um, valuable research is being done, but we need more because, again, we don't have that early detection test that is so needed to save lives. Mm -hmm. Wow. And we love that local connection mm -hmm. to being able to help so many people in the community to reach mm -hmm. out and feel like they have a personal connection mm -hmm. to be able to say, hey, Chris, hey, Amanda, yes. uh, what can we do? Um, we need some help. How mm -hmm. can you help us? Right. And we all need support when going through a really difficult time like yes, this. We do. And like you say, you know, it, it hits so many people, all of your loved ones, and everyone's affected within the family and how you deal with something that's tragic in its sense and I, I love that they can go to your website and get the support that they need or give you a phone call and you know talk mm -hmm. with them about their story as well. And also you know it's so important when people are going through their cancer journey is to have that support system. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things that are unknown, uncertain and so we really firmly believe at Charlene's Light too to provide that um, caring a caregiver yes. support, if you will, as well as that person going through the journey. Right. right. I've had phone calls from women saying, you know, I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. I just found out I have ovarian cancer. And mm -hmm. I'm happy to talk to them about my journey, sure. uh, as well as connect them with other women that have said, I'll volunteer. I'll share my story with them and offer that support. There's nothing like hearing, um, you know, I've been in your shoes. Right, yes. And the success rate, too, of knowing mm -hmm. that, well, for instance, you, that mm -hmm. they do have hope mm -hmm. because they have seen you, you know, come out of this and right. live a healthy right. I know, tell lifestyle. Them, yes. There is hope. I always mm -hmm. tell um, women that I meet that have ovarian cancer, don't give up. There mm -hmm. is hope. Stay positive. Surround yourself with positive people yes. and believe you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, you know, the general outlook for women that have mm -hmm. been diagnosed with ovarian cancer, you know, what are the stats and actually the <coughs> facts for that as well? Well, each woman diagnosed with ovarian cancer has a different story, yes. a different profile. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to give a, a general prognosis. But what I can say is the earlier they're detected, mm -hmm. the better their outcome. Right. Uh, so that is so extremely important. If you have any symptoms, go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, as far as stats and, and statistics, um, it, most women do not make it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I think about 15,000 women will die this year of ovarian cancer. That is so sad. Yeah, about 20, 22,000 will be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, if you're diagnosed at stage three or four, you have about a 20% chance. No. And that's a little bit late. Yeah, mm -hmm. It is. But a, again, that's where it's found. Mm -hmm. More, normally it's found. I mean, most people do ignore a little backache. Yeah. Most people ignore a little bloating. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're women and we're tough and we right. can, you know, it'll go away, it'll go away. Just right. a, you know, a man, you know, right. we'll just wait another week and we try exactly. to talk ourselves out. But they say that women should actually follow up with their intuition. Right. And we mm -hmm. need to address it. And if the doctor gives us a clean bill of health, you know what? We got a clean bill of health. We feel mm -hmm. a little bit better mm -hmm. about that. Exactly. So. And we always stress, and I, I know we can repeat it until we're blue in the face too, but it's okay to get another opinion if mm -hmm. you're not absolutely certain of what that doctor may have told you. Sure. Um, go with your intuition. Go with that gut feeling and mm -hmm. um, be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. You know your body best. Yes. And exactly. you have to just take really good care of it. Mm -hmm. um, however, sometimes something happens and then you just start all over again. Yeah. Wow. And I, I just love this idea of you guys honoring Charlene mm -hmm. the way that you do. And I'm sure she's watching you from here as well. I believe so, well, We have too. no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I believe so, too. Yes, yes. That is so great. And your story with your mom. Oh, you know. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I know she is uh, looking after us every single day as uh, we uh, do quite a bit to raise awareness, and uh, September is always Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month as mm -hmm. well. And our mission at, at Charlene's Light, too, is to always do a, a big event mm -hmm. to raise much needed awareness. Yes. Uh, so we always try to focus um, during that time frame to bring awareness, not only throughout the year, but really focus and bring uh, more awareness during that month, mm -hmm. too. Sure. Yes. I thought of something that I've been told recently. Um, a woman said, I had a pap test and it was normal. I do not have to worry about ovarian cancer. Oh. And I'd like to tell you that is false. Mm -hmm. um, 
a pap test will only detect mm -hmm. cervical cancer. It is not a screening tool for ovarian cancer. But I have heard that from a few different women, and I just, wow, really? Mm -hmm. yes. You think that that will pick it up? It's, it's not a detection test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We think that it's basically a doctor will look at all of these preventative mm -hmm. cares and you know, look at us as a whole and mm -hmm. try to be a little bit, but they only know what they've been educated on, right. on that sense right. as well. So. And my, my doctor at Mayo Clinic encouraged me to look outside of you know, typical medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a lot of things like meditation, mm -hmm. um, Qigong, which is an ancient Chinese um, energy work, yes. um, guided imagery, mm -hmm. and again I talked about the uh, the nutrition mm -hmm. and and exercise as well. Yes, there are there are a lot of things we can do. Um, it's amazing how powerful the mind is. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and to put ourselves in a good sense right. and and to go outside of Western medicine. It's okay. Yes, yes. because it's it's our bodies. Right, and we have the choice here in Minnesota to do complementary and alternative medicine. And if it's gonna end up benefiting mm -hmm. you for a healthier way of life, I, I encourage all women and men to do that as well. Absolutely. Yes. Well, we do have a few minutes left. And so of course, Christine, I'd like for you to, you know, shout out to my viewers, your last thoughts or anything that you would like to connect with them as well. Well, I would love anyone interested to visit our website, mm -hmm. www.charleneslight.org. Mm -hmm. um, visit us, share your story. Mm -hmm. um, we have a tab. Um, a woman can share her story if she's been diagnosed, or perhaps um, her daughter can, mm -hmm. um, or a friend. Share the story so that people can be educated about this very, very serious disease. And again, um, be an advocate for your own health. If one doctor doesn't listen to you, go to another one and say, I know something is wrong. Mm -hmm. This has been going on for more than a few weeks. Right. And we want people to know, too, there we are a resource. Mm -hmm. If we don't have those resources that we're connected with, we will find that answer to help uh, other individuals find the resources that they need. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to us to know that you can come to us, um, and we're going to be an advocate to help you out. Great. Good to know. Okay, well, thank you so much. I guess we've thank run out of time, Tina. Christina. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very, very welcome, Amanda. We appreciate the awareness. Yes. Thanks. Please tune in to my other shows of Knowledge for Wellness or view my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com, and this will give you more detailed information in your area. And you can also connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware, to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I sure hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Although 